Maxime Bashar Lagrave scored a nice win in round six of the Gibraltar Masters. The game, very instructive and very nice, but the end, very surprising. Watch what happened. Maxime, a couple of solid games, solid results in the last few rounds, and now a nice win. Uh, pleased with the way things went today? Yeah, I'm a bit shocked, under shock, but we'll come to that later. Uh, because the, the opening went very well. Uh, Knight a5 was a move I think is not in my notes. And so I was trying to basically refute it. And I wanted knight e3 first, knight takes, pawn takes, and to take advantage of the pawn on, f on f7. But then there's bishop e7. And queen e1, queen g3 is basically nothing. So I stumbled on, uh, on this idea of h4. And This was over the board for you? Yeah. And the idea is if he doesn't go h5, so for instance he goes bishop b5, it seems very logical. Then I go g4, knight e7, and h5. And there's no more h5 counterplay. And these positions are supposed to be, to be good for me. And I think uh, basically they are because uh, I can get as much space as I want on the king side. I think so we're going to have to ask you to just, yeah, thank you. Some ideas with h6, g6, uh, bishop g5, so. Creating you know. dark square weaknesses. Yeah, so this is better. But after h5, knight e3, knight takes, pawn takes. Okay, you have to stop knight g5. I mean, you cannot stop it, but you have at least to exchange the knight. So knight g5, bishop g5, ag. And here, uh, Fernando thought for like 45 minutes. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, if he goes, for instance, g6, then b3, knight, you have to go knight c6, knight e7 at some point, which is also why I was taking advantage of his move knight a5. Now I probably have to take on e7. Funny. Yeah, king takes, and something like bishop d3, queen f3, it looks very bad for him. Another big idea is if he goes queen d8 to get immediately some counterplay, then g6. Oh, it's nice. a killer pawn takes and like I don't remember queen c2, bishop d3, probably and bishop d3. And queen g5, you've got e4? Exactly. Queen g5, e4 is... Uh, yeah. So queen h4 still some of fights on, but looks... looks you can take on... Okay, good. you mean... I could e play bishop e3 probably. I can start with rook f4 as well. Right. Forcing queen g3, then take, take and... Mm. I mean, something. Maybe rook f3, maybe e6. Yeah, looks very unpleasant for black yeah. with it no development. Just looks very bad. Yeah. So when knight c6, which I thought was the only move, so the thing is now he gets um, his knight. I mean, I don't have time for b3, bishop a3 because he goes knight, knight e7, knight f5. This I have to avoid. So I took this pawn, even though it's a bit scary to open this file. But it's hard for him to get a second piece. The on idea this is file. whenever he gets his knight on f5, I will go g4. Right. I mean at the appropriate time. So f5 will not be an, an outpost for him. And um, so after bishop e2, you know, my plan was to exchange queens. So like if he went knight e7, I would have gone the same queen b3. Uh, so you say your plan was to exchange the queen. Can you explain to our viewers why this was, uh, why you felt a queen trade would benefit you here? Um, basically because if his queen gets to um, the king side, then suddenly there's a lot of things that I should care about, rook h2, queen h4. Whenever I go bishop f3, it's unclear. Sometimes the black's bishop can get to b5. The pawn on g5 is also quite weak, meaning that I should have brought my rook to f6 at some point. And it gets a bit messy. So if I exchange queens, for instance, if he exchanges queens here, I mean, even without this b4, b5 idea, I'll just uh, be dominant. Um, somehow I'll go bishop d2, king f2, rook h1. Try to exchange one pair of rooks and then somehow probably before, at B5 some point before like before. getting my bishop. Right. Uh, and how were you evaluating this position after queen b2? Did you think you were already much better here? Oh, clearly. Clearly better. Yeah. yeah. Um, another point, of course, if he goes queen d8, um, no, sorry. then rook f6, clearly. And uh, I cover g5 and now I... Uh, he's not never in time to get the queen to the h file. Yeah, so he went queen c7, bishop d2. I was not happy ab about bishop d2. I think I should have gone queen a3 immediately. The idea is long castle. Now I go b4 and rook h8, b5 should be winning. 
So this this is clearly what I should have done and uh, in the game. So it looks like I'm very much in control. So queen a3. Uh, yeah. Your king is perfectly safe on f2, so there's really yeah, not one, much. One queen. nice line also is if he goes queen d8, um. queen a3, it's an important move. Rook h1, take, take, and now he's threatened already this counterplay with queen h8. But I take queen uh, g5, queen f8 check, knight d8 is forced, and rook f4. And it doesn't have a check. I threaten some move like rook g4. So should be winning. So your idea of rook f4 is to stop queen h4 check? Yes, and, and he, doesn't have, uh, he doesn't have an idea anymore. Nice. Uh, but king b8, and here, so I played rook c1. Ah, uh, queen a3 first, of course, because it cannot go. So I decided to keep the rooks to get for the queen trade. To prepare for the queen trade and here this moment here actually um i was looking at at the game at this point uh, there was an idea of bishop before this was actually suggested by adiban who was here before for an interview yeah, did you like consider it. this i didn't like it so king maybe queen queen d8 and it uh, bishop d6 i guess king a8 b4 i assume this is the idea and now the thing is, I was afraid that, you know, his queen comes into play. With something like, but it's still hard, because bishop d7 you probably have. b5, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, and here, I don't know. I mean, it's totally random, but... Yeah. But you just felt that queen trade would just make things much simpler. You wouldn't have to calculate as much. Yeah. Um, no, I felt that after b4, I crashed through. And actually, it's not that easy. So like knight b4, and uh, yeah, we're going to get to the part of the game where I'm shocked. Uh, so like here, rook b7, knight a2, I was trying to find a win, and I thought... It I looks like black should get mated here, because yeah, the king yeah. is in a, in, in a sort of a yeah. kill zone. And I thought I found it with e4, d e, so I cannot go rook f7 immediately because of e3 check, bishop e3. And now we understand why we played e3 to cover to of e4 as an escape square. But I thought bishop f4, rook d5, rook c7, I threatened rook c5 check. Wait, you played rook c7 on the board? We actually yes. thought that's a really problem because he can just go king d4 here? Yes, this is um, this is the shocking part. So when I played rook c7, I realized you can just take on d4 and it's not made. I thought bishop e3 and rook c5 was made. But he has and king d6 there. So you thought this was made while you were calculating. When we saw this in the live stream, we actually thought that this was entered wrongly or something because yeah. he resigned here. He resigned. He had the same hallucination. So this oh. is the shocking part. Um, I don't know, but I couldn't find a mate after knight a2. Actually, in this position, um, bishop e5 is... Killing for, for black. Oh, okay. Simply, simply this. Yeah, because I think the idea then you can... Oh, rook f7, you have rook, yeah. Yeah, rook yeah, f7 yeah. and uh, even rook c7 next. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, clearly. I mean, I just... After he... Re when you played rook c7, did you I, realize I, instantly I, over I, the board? I realized like after one minute or something. And uh, so I was... Uh, I suddenly was deep in thought and then uh, he surprised me by resigning. A pleasant but surprise I, because and how would you evaluate the position after this? I didn't find more than a draw, so like I, I still have a draw, but, right? But I don't have more than that, I think. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. know it was a shocking uh, end of the game, really. <laughs> well, they normally say that in chess you make your own luck, but here it was just very lucky. That um, yeah, but. I mean, in general, of course, uh, my position was so good that... Yeah, I, throughout the game. Yeah, that should have been winning anyway. But, uh, yeah, you don't want to have these uh, unpleasant moments over the board uh, where you realize you've blundered. And, um, but, okay, I, I'll take the win. Of course, <laughs> I think uh, overall it's kind of deserved that I win this game. But, um, yeah, I'm still shocked. <laughs>
So after he resigned, did you, when you were analyzing at the lobby, did you, uh, did he realize also instantly or was it only when you went to analyze that uh, it came out that King D4 was a possibility? Uh, yeah, I told him at the end uh, yeah. that King D4 was an option. But uh, yeah, no, um, he suffered basically the same hallucinations that looks like rook c5 and bishop e3 is a mating net and after king d4 there's no, there's no mate, there's no net anymore. So this uh, oversight, would you, uh, would you put it on the battle of the sexes? We had it last night. It was a late night. Do you think that could be mm. the reason for this oversight? No, this kind of oversight, I can only blame myself <laughs> and... Uh, and that's what I'll do. <laughs> All right, but tell us, how did you enjoy last night? And the men's team won, 2 1, but the first loss was quite horrendous. Um, yeah, no, it was very stressful. Then there was this first game where <laughs> Ivan suffered this uh, hallucination, another one that bishop b5 had been played instead of bishop c4. Then after f5, the position is just too bad, Already actually. Bad. When it, yeah, when he touched his f pawn, he should have just gone f6, I guess. <laughs> and. Um, so, but yeah, then of course we um, made we, a we recovered. Yes. We recovered for, from this eight moves loss, and uh, um, part of the way we we fought back. As a captain, you should be. And now we're at the half. We've crossed the halfway mark here at the tournament. Uh, evaluate your play for us so far. Uh, uneven. Um, so I've had a couple of nice games with nice calculations. Um, but overall, uh, I'm uh, still maybe a bit tired and um, in some of the games I've uh, suffered big um, calculating mistakes, so even in this one, but I can see of, think of a couple of others. So, of course, um, uh, but there's still hope. I mean, I'm still close to the, to the leading pack and uh, if I manage to get a strong one and maybe... Um, maybe less blunders, uh, I, do, I do think I will have a shot at winning it. All right, well, before you go, I have to ask you this question. A move like uh, Rook C7 when it happens and then missing it and resigning on the spot for players of your level or Fernando's level, how, in, if you have to explain to that very shortly, why that, something like that happens, how would you explain it? Um, well, I think it's because of the scenario also. Like You expect Black to get mated here. <laughs> And so, um, like, okay, from my side, it's like, okay, I f think I found the mate, and I feel like it should be mate, so I don't, uh, I basically don't bother when I play, once I play e4, I think rook c7. You and took three was, seconds for rook c7 as uh, well, or did you take longer, maybe? A bit a longer, longer, but not much. No, basically I was expecting e3 check, which I thought was the only move to prevent mate. King is 3 would be 3, bishop d3, and rook c3, but it's winning, of course, right. for me. Um, and then, uh, from Fernando's point of view, it's like, okay, he played it, so it must be mate, and uh, you see the mate, and you don't bother, and king takes d4 looks like it's mate, so, you yeah. know, this is how these hallucinations happen. I mean, if it's uh, like a complicated game, and... Um, you know, you double-edged, you, can, you can't really suffer these hallucinations. But here with this king on d5, it just, it's just be begging to be mated, but uh, suddenly it escapes. All right, we're going to let you get some rest. Thank you so much for joining us, Maxime, and we look forward to having you back in our studio. Thank you for your time. Thank you.